tail of the tape for Jose Felix Quezada against Cameron Creel. Quezada, another Chicago, Illinois product, 21 years old, entered 10 and 0, six knockouts. Creel, 8, 10, and 2 out of Las Vegas, Nevada, the 22 year old. This was a good one, and we pick up the action in the second round. Here's Kenny and BJ. As we go into round two, it is Crail in the very colorful little lime green in there, some red and black and blue. There you see him on the left of the screen. And Quesada from here in Chicago, these welterweights with Quesada coming in here with a perfect record. And Crail may be a very deceptive 8, 10, and 2 record, BJ. It's hard to believe this guy has a losing record with a good start that we saw in the first. Deceptive record, Kenny. Look at his left hand. He really uses it intelligently. He's got a nice left jab, and uh, I saw a couple of nice left hooks to the body that he stuck in very nicely in that first round. Reminded me a little bit of a uh, beautiful combination there again. Uh, reminded me a bit of those, uh, you know, body punch by Julio Cesar Chavez. He'd shoot that hook up top and then sink that one to the bottom, and uh, I don't know, it made me smile and uh, really appreciate that punch. Trying to get the measure of Quesada right now is Crail. Quesada coming in here, a lot of promise here for this man, only 21 years old. He's been a pro for just over two years. He last fought May the 17th at a six-round unanimous decision over Ariel Vasquez. You see Quesada's doing some good work. He's got his man covered up against the ropes, and he's able to let those combinations go and, uh, you know, really open up uh, his opponent. It was a nice right by Quesada. And Quesada goes down now and works on the body. Quesada's showing a lot of poise here. He is. You see when Crail's in that tight guard, that defense like that, Quesada's changing the angles of those punches to make sure and, uh, you know, be able to penetrate that tight defense. Body shots up the middle, around the side of the guard, doing all the things to make sure he can get through that, uh, that defense of uh, Crail. Nice right again. Quesada looking for every opening and taking advantage of it here. Again, nice combinations by Quesada, throwing a lot of punches here. Nice that took to the body a second ago by Crail, and then a beautiful combination by Quesada. And Hands right back is Crail. He took some nice punches in that sequence. They did. And both guys are letting their hands go, but uh, Quesada definitely getting the better of it here in the second round. But that's what I like to see, a good close fight. You know, Crail had a good first round, Quesada had a good second round, and, uh, you know, back and forth. Uh, Action between two good up and coming fighters. Even though Crail is on the, his record doesn't look like he's an up and coming fighter, but he's, he's a fun guy to watch. Final seconds of round two. This one is scheduled for six between these welterweights. Ten seconds, obey the bell, guys. As round two comes to an end, good round, good start to this fight as we get ready for round three. That was a huge victory tonight for Rashi Warren, who had, it appeared, half of Cincinnati here with him, led by Paulette, his mom. Yeah, he did. Uh, you know, he, he fought a really good fight, Kenny. He was fighting a very tough, undefeated champion, a guy who's got a lot of uh, amateur experience, two-time Olympian, and uh, he really showed up and uh, was able to execute his game plan tonight. Got out of the ring, um, or got into the ring and won the first four or five rounds and came on strong, strong down the stretch and uh, sealed the victory. Eric Raskin giving that last round. Quesada, who is in the white and the red and the very colorful flags around him. And Quesada trying to be undefeated once again. 10-0 coming in. Nice left hook by Quesada a second ago. I love how, you know, when Crail gets in that high guard like that, that Quesada is able to uh, you know, shoot a variety of combinations to be able to open that up. Good veteran move. And he's nice left by Quesada. Crail misses trying to go up the middle. Whenever you've got a fighter that leans straight back like that, that left hook is a very effective punch because it comes at an angle to where it's very difficult to get out of the way of. I remember when Tommy Hearns and Marvelous Marvin Hagler fought. Sugar Ray Leonard was doing the commentary. And Sugar Ray said, listen, 
watch out for the right hook of Marvin Hagler because Tommy has a tendency of leaning back, and that's exactly what hurt Tommy and eventually got him out of there in the third round of that fight. Quesada's looked for every angle. The young man who began his boxing career at 80 joined the Scottsdale Park boxing team here in Chicago and then went on to become the 2009 National Junior Golden Gloves champ in the 101-pound weight division. 101 pounds, Kenny. I didn't know that was a division. <laughs> Irashi Warren won the Bantamweight title tonight at 118. Where's a size four and a half? And uh, I didn't know that was physically possible. He told me uh, I, I, I like a lot of different kinds of shoes. I'm a, I'm a sneaker guy, but unfortunately, I don't have them all in my size. So uh... Right now, the shoe's fitting perfectly for Quesada as he's having his way here with Quayle. And again, coming upstairs and then going right back to the body. Nice exhibition of boxing here by Quesada. But Crail is still hanging in there and looking pretty strong. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just not doing enough. He's not letting his hands go. He's kind of getting overwhelmed right now by Quesada. It's kind of like, you know, Quesada's just overwhelming him with all those combinations. Good body shot by Crail a second ago, but uh, Quesada's dominating this round. Crail's taking some punishment here, but obviously still looks pretty fresh. Yeah, what he could do is how he could really disrupt that offense of, of uh, Quesada. Instead of just blocking all the punches on the arms, making him miss. Move your head. That will stop and, uh, you know, put Quesada on balance, and that will not allow him to shoot as many punches uh, consecutively like that. Jose Quesada trying to stay unbeaten in front of the home folks as the round comes to an end. As we get ready now for round four, Jose Felix Quesada coming in here undefeated this is his 11th fight the ninth time that he has fought here in the university of illinois chicago pavilion talk about a home court advantage and that last scorecard unofficially eric giving it to quesada as well yeah he's doing too much good work kenny you got to give him those rounds he's uh he's overwhelming his opponent tonight and uh you know, Crail's got to look for opportunities to counter those punches, slow down that offensive attack. When, when a Quesada shoots a shot, hit him with a counter shot and make him stop. Quesada, this is ninth fight here. He's, he actually participates here more than the basketball team. <laughs> the Illinois Chicago Flames of the Horizon League, I don't know, plays that many home games. That explains a lot of the fans that he's got here tonight. Every time he shoots those combinations, they, uh, they, get, they get excited about it. And, you know, rightfully so. I like what I see out of him. He's 10-0. He's obviously coming up. He's got a tough guy in front of him tonight, but he's, uh, he's doing what he needs to do to, uh, to get the victory. Cameron Crail, meanwhile, we talked about that losing record. He's only been knocked out once in his career. That was over two years ago. And he has faced 11 unbeaten opponents in his career. Gets a lot. This is his 12th. Maybe that explains the record of 8, 10, and 2. Yeah, it does. He's, uh, you know, obviously been thrown to the wolves early. A lot of guys and fighters, when they're coming up, don't have managers and promoters to help uh, lead and guide their careers. And this kid, Crail, might have been a little different had he come up in different hands with different management. Quesada again, nicely going to the body and then going back upstairs. That's something I like about Quesada too. Look at his gloves. Whatever he's in this, uh, his boxing position, his, his, uh, he's not making a fist. His hands are open and he does that so he can protect more of his face defensively. You open up those gloves and you can really cover up more of your head. So uh, it's kind of a nice thing to see out of a young kid. I remember Chris Bird told me that a long time ago with the sparring session with him. I'm like, Chris, explain to me how your defense is so good. He's like, BJ, I keep my gloves open all the time until I punch. It covers up more of my head and it uh, keeps uh, more energy in my arms. Excellent point there, BJ. And Quesada, he's showing a lot of poise here. As we mentioned, he turned pro at the age of 19 just over a couple of years ago. But you can tell it with his hands, he's very loose, he's relaxed, and that allows him to keep energy in his arms. He doesn't get arm weary as much because he's not always making that tight, balled up fist. If you make a tight fist for 10 to 15 seconds, Ken, your arm will get tired, and uh, Quesada's learned that. Quesada continues to control this fight. Crail still game. He's taking a lot of punishment here. And again, body and then upstairs again for Quesada. I really am impressed with the way this kid maneuvers and looks at every angle. Good body work, Kenny. Final seconds, round four. Another strong showing for the hometown guy. And earlier tonight, in what is the shocker of the day, light heavyweights, Andrew Von Farah coming up against the underdog Joe Smith Jr., but it's Joe Smith Jr. with the big knockdown.
Kenny, I was shocked. You know, I figured Fun Fire would come out and have his way, uh, you know, later in the fight. But, you know, Joe Smith had other plans, and he wanted to ride his own destiny tonight, and that's exactly what he did. He caught the experienced Fun Fire early in the fight and showed that world-class power and got him out of there. And in the first round, it is Joe Smith Jr. with the knockout. The man from Long Island, New York, the construction worker, who now says he'll probably devote a little more time to boxing, maybe even <laughs> full time, after that big victory tonight. Now we go to round five, scheduled for six. It's been so far Jose Quesada in charge of this, the Chicago native who picks up another unofficial round from Eric. And he is in the very colorful red, white, blue, a little yellow and green in there, the flags surrounding his trunks and Quesada continues to be the aggressive fighter here. Yeah, he's doing good work, Kenny. Like I said, you know, varying up the combinations, making it very difficult for Crail to see where the punches are coming from. Uppercuts, left hooks, overhand rights, jabs, and uh, you know, especially when you go in that tight guard where you just put your hands up. You have to move your head. You can't make the guys uh, miss all the shots when you just try to block through the gloves. They're too little in the pros. And you started seeing that almost six, seven years ago, eight years ago, whenever they changed the computer scoring in the amateur system, like almost 15 years ago. But in order for guys to prevent from getting points against them, they just put their gloves up like that. And in the pros, it doesn't work because there's no headgear and the gloves are much smaller. And again, it is Quesada pretty much doing what he's been doing throughout this entire fight, hasn't he, BJ? Yeah, he's just, uh, you know, continuing to come forward. Crail's having a better round, though. He's landing some uh, good left hands. He's using that jab. I don't know where it was at the last few rounds. Okay, needed, uh, needed it in the second and third round. Well, he's been on the defensive most of the time here tonight. But Crail does show, you know, some potential. Again, that misleading losing record that he has. Because once again, he's fighting a guy who's unbeaten his 12th unbeaten opponent, and he's Still young career. He's only 22. Yeah, he fights much more like a veteran, but um, you know, still though, in these last few rounds, it just doesn't seem like uh, he's letting his hands go enough to uh, convince the judges that he should be the winner. Now this is all Quesada right now. Again, fighting here for the ninth time in this arena. And it looks like, unless there's a drastic change coming up, if one more round to go, he's going to remain undefeated overall, and especially here in this arena. It's his second home to him, and he does some more good work upstairs. But he's still got some things to learn, Kenny. Quesada, he's having a good fight, but like, for example, right there, when you get your opponent against the ropes, there's no need to shoot three or four little soft punches. Shoot one or two soft ones and really dig in and load up to the body. He's not going to go anywhere he can't get out of the way, and uh, a veteran will make you know, a, a young kid like that pay whenever he just bats straight up the ropes. You got him trapped. You can't go anywhere. Let something go with some real firepower. Jose Casada still in control with one round to go here between these welterweights. As we get ready now, welterweight sixth and final round here at the University of Illinois Chicago Pavilion. And the hometown favorite, Jose Casada left of your screen has been in charge of this fight against Cameron Crail. Crail has taken a lot of a lot of punches here. He's never been wobbled or staggered and he has looked pretty impressive at times in this fight, but it has been Caseda that's been in charge. Nice jab right hand by uh, Crail a second ago. Nice counter left hook whenever Caseda kind of fell in with that right hand. Oh, good shot by Caseda. And I would like to see Crayol just really use that left hand more. Use that jab, make Casada pick. Don't let Casada just walk in. You know, punish him with that left hand. Mix your combinations up and down and, uh, you know, start to have some more offensive success. It would appear that at this stage, Crayol needs a knockout. He's had only one in his 20 previous fights. And not a huge puncher, but a sharp puncher. And, uh, but you gotta let your punches go if you wanna score that knockout and he's just not doing enough so far. Quesada, meanwhile, taking nothing for granted, still continues to be aggressive here. That's a nice right. Nice. You see how he lands at Quesada's, uh, brings that overhand right because Crayol's got his hands in front of his face. So he loops it kind of around the guard and lets it slide back in over that left hand, or over that, uh, over the left hand of uh, Crayol. 
Posada doubling up on the jab. We've seen some uppercuts. We've seen him do some nice body work here in this fight. What do you think about him, BJ? He's only been a pro for a little over two years, and this is 11th pro fight. That well, was a good prospect. You know, definitely someone to watch out for. I see a lot of things I like and still, you know, a lot of improvements that he needs to make as far as, you know, when he gets a man covered up like that, when he gets him against the ropes, really unload that firepower and, uh, you know, make him really pay. Kesada, second of the shooter right hand, a little off balance, and he just stayed in that southpaw stance for about three or four seconds until it was comfortable for him to switch back to the orthodox. Effective move. Well, with the jab, he's not been following up, though. He hasn't put a lot of combinations together in this fight. Good body shot by Kesada. Kesada doing a lot of things well here again for this young fighter. Grew up fighting when he's eight years old, got into a boxing team in Chicago, became a national gold glove champ. He's a favorite here in this area. Again, the ninth time that he's fought in this very arena. That'll be the question down the road when he moves on and moves up a little more in competition. How will it be? That's always the case for a young fighter. It's been a good showing tonight as the clock ticks down, and this fight is just about to come to an end. Quesada and Crail going the distance. Quesada figuring that he has this one and will stay undefeated. Crail, meanwhile, coming in here from Las Vegas. He put on a good show, took a lot of punishment, hung in tough. How did the judges see it? That's going to be the big question. Did Jose Quesada do enough tonight? to stay undefeated, trying to run his record to 11 and 0. It's now in the hands of the judges. When we come back to Chicago, we will get their verdict to see if indeed Quesada is still perfect. Welterweights going the distance, all six rounds. Jose Quesada coming in has the favorite. Six rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, Mauro Di Fiore scores the contest 57 57, a draw. Overruled by judges Scott Dexter and Jerry Jacobko, who have the bout 58 56 for your winner by majority decision. And still undefeated, Jose Felix Quesada. So, another victory for a local product. Quezada remains undefeated. As for us, that'll do it for tonight's Premier Boxing Champions.